finally, <laughs> thank you. This is a finish of the link call of August 30th, uh, 2023. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Uh, no, no. Uh, and we're talking about like, um, uh, I guess, gener generative AI as it um, uh, interacts with note taking and other kind of artifacts uh, uh, that groups and, and individuals want to produce, and uh, whether AI lacks a compass and a ratchet, like Chris put it very well. Um, yes, and I guess, uh, yes, over the summer, I was saying, like, I, I finally read and I finished, actually, finished, as I has said before, uh, good old Engelbart. Oh, good. And I love, I, I don't know if you've, uh, it, it really like uh, the, the last part really reads like science fiction. Essentially, it's like uh, it, it, he takes the reader through this hypothetical visit to the future where like this system that he has tried to describe uh, in the first part of the essay is all, already in like widespread use. And he tries to describe how it feels to look at someone using this tool that is like, it doesn't exist. And to which extent it is even hard to understand exactly what they are doing with the tool. And it was so interesting to read that precisely as, you know, the world is like starting to uh, it's learning to use things like GPT, right? Uh, because um, there was this uh, interesting aspect to, you know, like he, uh, Engelbart trying to predict the applications of these ideas in the, with this hypothetical tool and asked actually doing the same here. I guess this is why I was reminded like trying to imagine how the workflows of the future will look like as enabled by these new tools. Which Engelbart piece were you, were you reading? Which uh, document? Uh, yeah, so um, so the classic uh, being um, augmentation. Uh, and so Augmenting human intellect, a conceptual framework. Exactly, yes. 18, yeah. uh, 1962, thank you. 1962, uh, I have like here from, straight from the Agora, like some highlights from the end and uh, yeah, it was uh, it's beautiful. I, 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 you know, yes, exactly. I'm thinking human intellect, and uh, yes, very much. Uh, I actually I haven't. I, I searched back in the summer a bit, but I maybe not so, so thoroughly. If somebody had actually written something specifically about reading Engelbart in the light of these new developments, but this seems like a very interesting exercise. Actually, it was. It felt quite interesting to read it in this context. Hey, Samuel. Greetings. Nice oh. to see you. Hello, everyone. Uh, I have, have, have any of you met um, Eugene Kim? Oh, my God. I haven't talked to him in ages. But yes. Mm -hmm. How's he doing? What's up? Or do, are you thinking about uh, Eek because Engelbart came? You know, sure. Yeah, that is why. But um, I, used to see, uh, I used to see him a lot. He was brought on, we brought him on to lead the Wikimedia strategy conversation in 2009, 2010. Sweet. And uh, I think at the time, the Purple Numbers site was still alive, but it's not anymore, sadly. That's a, uh, I think it's still a good visual to keep in mind. It's That's something that people haven't brought back in current current generation of Tools for Thought interline annotations. We've gotten a, a tiny, tiny bit of marginalia, but um, what what is the official manuscript term for inter interlinealia? Uh, sorry, interlinealia sounds beautiful. Yeah, margin. Uh, it's not marginalia. I mean, what's? Uh... It's not a margin. I don't know. Anyway. Yeah. There's certainly a large. There's, there's a long history of interlinealia, whatever whatever it's called. <laughs> Easy for you to say. Uh, but we haven't, we haven't tried to implement it, and no one has made very good use of multicolored text. At one point, I think there was a medium style that tried to offer it. Mm -hmm. Well, the tough part with color is, what do you make that color mean, and does that color universally mean that thing in all languages, or is it even seen? In as a color in all languages and there's i don't think color color language is uniform at all if you go read about chinese colors uh you'll be like wait what it could just be grayscale i yeah. think the, the point is it, it should it should just be slightly less noticeable, um, noticeable and bold than mm -hmm. the main text however you are in mm -hmm. my use of the brain i have 
three colors basically. The white is the default for everything. I use yellow yeah. to attract attention. Yellow means look here, yeah. there's, there's a collection. And I use purple for opinions. Purple means there's something that might be interesting here. And that, and, nice. and, I, and I hate lots of colors and that, and you have to learn what those colors are. There is a thought in my brain that explains the colors, but you have to find it. It's under, yeah. it's under notes for using Jerry's brain. Um, nice. but, but I'm trying to do some harnessing of color within the same map because the map is always looks like itself. Mm. On, on, on Marginalia and Interlinealia, which I'm totally keeping, by the way, mm. I really linked it, so it's a thing. Uh, yeah, I use a dash, but I think it will drop with use. Um, so I keep... I guess I keep going back, like every few months I go like, wait, the revolution was going to be annotated. So they said. If you, you've seen the, the yeah. like Dan's talk and I'm like. That was right after the flying, now. that was right after the flying car, by the way. <laughs> I think well, it will land uh, um, uh, earlier than the flying car, uh, but. Well, in Terminalia, uh, I'm totally adopting. And by this, I have I will take a hiatus because the supermarket uh, or it's here. But I will be back and I can hear you. Sorry. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, I think I think that um, links and having some kind of persistent uh, link organization on the web is still an, a, a nice open challenge. So is so is annotation, not any, uh, in, a, in all these cases, not a particular implementation, right? Just the persistent move towards that mode of thinking and, and, and presentation. And I think the a third that I've been thinking a lot about recently is um, evaluation of evaluation of links that are specifically used as sources, which we should have a different name for. So the link, the note, and the source, or and but and specifically um, typed sources what was it what was the intention of using it as a source and what is the uh sort of commentary on on that over time do you have pre preferred nomenclature i i just i think of them as link note and site Because I have an over fondness for having parallel con concepts uh -huh. take up the same number of letters <laughs> <laughs> in my own notes, and I think each of them deserves a like a web scale initiative that is not really technologically denominated, and it's the place where everyone who cares about those things tries to figure it out. And and there's probably some resident like. I think the right way to add news to that trio is as um, summarization. So summarization is not any of those things. And hey, and we're losing Flancian. He seems to be falling out of the conservation of some, something. Conservation of participants. That's Peter, right. Every time I see you, I assume that you're on a, a, like a Los Angeles set somewhere. So <laughs> he's actually in the Mandalorian set, which is like this this round screen where you can project anything you want. It's really kind of cool. Pete's universe is all, all LED. That, that's not just the Pantone color of the year. I, th I thought it was doing some marketing. <laughs> if it is the Pantone color of the year, how did Baby Puke Green make it? <laughs> and Pete, the green is, is like shaded differently through Jitsi somehow. The, it's not coming through as, as normal as background green as it was in the other. Yeah. Zoom. I am, I'm actually going to tweak the color temperature on ah. my camera. I have no white anywhere in the frame, so I, I don't even know how the uh, white balance works on this. But 
if I uh, if I make it go like that and then turn down the saturation. Oh, that's nice. That's much. That. Oh, that's that's more civil. Less chartreuse. Yeah, you, you don't look like you're inside a spaceship anymore. <laughs> Um, so we, we've lost Flancian a couple of times. I hope you can mix it back in. We were talking about note taking and its importance over time, given that, Hey, now Intelli AI, you know, generative AI is going to know everything. And then we ended up with how do we annotate texts and what do we call the different parts, parts of annotation? And if SJ will repeat the thing he just said, I think you'll find it interesting because I think we've had conversations along similar lines. Uh, oh, sure. So about notes, links, and sites. Yes, I, I was thinking that th there are. So I've, I've been thinking recently about about sites and annotations on sites that help inform how they're used and how they're how they're interpreted. But um, in the context of annotation and just link catalog being all feeling like there's still really useful unsolved arenas. Uh, I would love to see web scale places to discuss how to make progress as a, as a knowledge society that aren't, that aren't specific, as far specifically fond of any, any implementation, just the place to organize current thoughts and, and um, help one another make progress. I like it. Of course, there you were right. <clears throat> and, and, I, and I would add news. News seems like the one of these of these arenas that has a lot of successful businesses, but none of them do the thing that we would want in terms of information summarization. So news is probably the wrong term, but um, links, notes, sites, and Sums. Sums for summers. I need a four-letter four word. You need a four-letter word. Um, uh, briefs is too long and sounds like underwear. Right. Anyway. Michael, yay. Either that or Flancian has converted into Michael Grossman. <laughs> Flancian is having trouble getting in the Jitsi with something that works for him, so he'll... He'll be falling in and out. And he's back. Not that I'm superstitious or anything. But... Flancian, is this bandwidth? We can. Um... Yeah, keep, try to help. Keep, keep your video on. I, I, I think he's having general systems systems issues. That's weird. Maybe it's a nationality thing. Maybe Switzerland has decided to cut itself off from the internet, audio, and video. Our conversation has become sufficiently non-neutral. <laughs> That's weird. Well, it's oh yeah, I just blamed it. See, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's working for the rest of us. Chris usually has just the hiccup. Yeah, I was going to say it's always me. It's never, yeah. <laughs> never Blancian. That's right. Um, shoot, Did, and yeah. Well, we'll we'll let uh, Francian uh, troubleshoot. Uh, so, uh, any uh, where we'd like to take this conversation, or is there another topic that's burning a hole in anybody's head? Oh, I'll, I'll mention some gossip while we're on annotations. Awesome. Um, and impl and in ignoring implementations. Um, while while I was away for a half a minute, hypothesis went from a staff of roughly thirty five down to nineteen. And in the first call I listened to today, I heard a word repeated dozens of times that heretofore I have not heard many of their executives or employees use, which is the word customer. Um, so I'm not quite sure. I haven't gotten scuttlebutt on where exactly they're going and what the shift was. They seem to have lost a lot of customer servicey people and one or two engineers but everything else seems to be moving a pace. So, uh, you know, Chris, was this the, was this the, um, the call a couple of hours ago that was about new features? Yeah. 
Okay. I, I was on that call too, just out of curiosity. And I mean, very education centered, yes. like, like strictly. Um, and I think they're moving, they're probably, and what's weird too, is about a year ago, they got a huge infusion of like 15 million from an outside group, which I expected meant they were going to like double down and then create twice as many employees and start building new stuff quickly. Um, and they replaced one or two people who left. Um, I think the two biggest, like about a year ago, year and a half ago, were John Udell was a major blow to have lost him. But I think he's getting to the point where I'm ready to retire or I'm just bored and I want to do something new. Um, and then Nate Angel left and went to Creative Commons um, were like two big things. And, you know, their head of their vice president of education is probably, I think, one of the bigger people to leave in this clean out. Um, and most of the rest were kind of, you know, small foot soldiers, I think, in the operation. But I did specifically ask the anonymous question. I noticed the shift. What does it mean for the future of the product? Which in a call about new features, they apparently chose to ignore the question and did not answer it. So I, you know, that also sends a signal of some semblance so we'll see what happens um, but my guess is they're going to double down more into the lms educational space and start selling it as a product rather than as a a free kind of social tool to a broader public yeah i, I really i felt like i had wandered into something different than i knew hypothesis to be and they were really talking about you know the what you got when you were a customer yeah. of this product when your institution you know was a they'll they'll post the video probably in the next couple of days but i'm pretty sure i heard the word customer about 80 times yeah. and i you'd be lucky to go three months and hear two people on any of those calls use that word so it sounds like hypothesis has gone through some pretty traumatic change recently yeah it, it was, I, I'm an outsider. I don't know much about hypothesis. Um, you know, happy user, un, unhappy recommender because the uh, initial user experience is really terrible. Um, but I, it, it's never been, so I guess the UX has always, always struck me as uh, a, a real problem to adoption. Um, and and a company or an organization organization that was looking for itself kind of so i'm not surprised that they found something that maybe isn't the thing that we would have hoped that they could have found but this uh, speaking of a hypothesis does any remember anybody remember uh crit um from foresight and crit suite copying yep copying copying uh, copying yeah. ye, yes no ye um i the other thing i remember ping was super sweet always a, a fun person i the other thing i i remember about ping he was one of the few people who was a google employee and also got hit by um the, the nimors um because uh he tried to use ping for his name and oh. you know google is like google plus back in google plus days google plus is like <laughs> One, you know, one word, that's not a real name. And and he, so he had a bunch of people testify on his behalf. He's like a Google employee, <laughs> you know, and he's like, everybody knows me as Ping. That's my name. I don't mm -hmm. know what you're talking about. So, yeah. Anyway, I, um, I, I miss Crit. Um, I don't know much. I don't remember much about it, but um, the uh, C2 page is, is interesting to read about it. I never used it, but I remember Crit link, all the different sort of moving parts. Yeah. Um, SJ Ping and, and OLPC, that was like back in the day, right? 10 years ago or 15 years ago, whatever. Yeah, I haven't somehow. seen him for a long time. He was doing great when I saw him last year, but I think he was already exploring new things. Yeah, I'm sure. Crit is that's super, that's, super that's old. Borg. And yeah, I'm sure. I, 
I so I I guess it it's a thing that I remember it had some really cool stuff to it, and now I don't really remember. Um, fine fine grain link targets, um, purple slurple off of the C two page that kind of rings a bell. We were also talking about purple numbers from Eric Eugene yeah. Kim, Eugene Eric Kim. So I feel um, Hello? really feeling the need for Hello? a modern a modern collective space a little bit that that fills a role parallel to what Meatball Wiki was for briefly yep. around some like ideas of collaboration, but something that's around these thoughts of how to how to make persistent progress and how we and how we share and organize information. And we've fallen in the, the current generation of um, the like design. I don't want to. It, it doesn't really have anything to do with the internet. But we've fallen into this weird universe where all people's conversations about these things are denominated in terms of companies. Like, oh, is that company that's implementing that idea still like successful, or did it uh, cut its staff in half? Like, who cares? <laughs> uh, that's what, that. Yeah. Like, it's good. To, like, we should all care that there is some good implementation of uh, obvious classic feature, but. Um, it's terrifying that the best demonstration of an essential thing could end up getting bit rotted because it happened to be hosted by a company that went through like the wrong part of a what's the opposite of an S curve? A, um, an N curve. <laughs> the the complement to that is uh, I I happened to be helping somebody with npm uh, yesterday, and we actually had to go to npm js dot org or whatever it is and i'm like and it's got a big thing you know we're part of we're part of github now and i'm like oh my god microsoft suck up uh sucked up npm i forgot that you know so it's like so it either dies because the company died or or it gets absorbed by the borg <clears throat> is this the ultimate fate of all such projects we're, we're sitting here bemoaning all these Nice things that, that we thought were going to fly or take off that have each met an unfortunate fate through a, a sequence a se sequence of unfortunate events. Yeah. The fate of all projects be acquired by Microsoft or destroyed by Yahoo. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, which would you rather have your your baby eaten by uh, Yahoo or eaten by Microsoft? The great black thumb of Yahoo. Um, there was just an article in yesterday's flow about the, the rebirth of Yahoo. It got bought by a private equity firm and is trying to make a comeback now. It's like, okay. Again, time number eight, maybe now we're on. Yeah. <laughs> the thing that always killed me about Yahoo was it, you know, it managed success because of where and when and all that. But, you know, what a terrible brand. And, um, <laughs> And they would, you know, suck up good brands and the good brands would die under that umbrella. And it was just such a shame. I mean, you know, like something like Flickr or, or I mean, Flickr still exists in a, in a form, but. Um, and after it got wrested away from death yeah. at Yahoo. Yeah. Um, and uh, do they, they own Tumblr, right? At one point. They did, but uh, yeah. it was saved from total extinction by right. WordPress's uh, yeah. parent org, Automatic. Yeah, Automatic. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oof. Well, the good news is um, code is like DNA, and de-extinction is a lot easier for some of these things, or should be. It's the problem. What's missing is a business model or a community to support things, like like delicious. I'm so mad at Josh Schachter for selling it and then like not caring. Uh, it would be so nice if Delicious existed. Um, and it doesn't. Uh, that's yet another like Yahoo. It's, it's death. It, it exists in zombie form within Pinboard. Yeah, but Pinboard doesn't actually do what Delicious did. It, it does. It just lost the, the, social, the social community around it. So it has so all the features, not just but it doesn't have the community? It, it's not just code; it's also um, the community. Yeah, user base. Flickr is a good example of that. 
um, it, it needed the code as a substrate, but in the in the glory days, Flickr was the community, not the code. So this appears to have happened in relatively short order to threads. Is anybody um, following like subscribers? I say what's threads, but I, I actually kind of know what threads is, not that I care. Yeah. The meta Instagram uh, Twitter competitor offer thing. I that I, <laughs> I've never even looked. Really? I, I had yeah, I had negative interest in anything ever. You know, it's like seriously, guys. And there there are things about things that Facebook has developed. Yarn, for instance, talking about NPM. You know awesome stuff has fallen off the, the back end truck of, of Facebook and I maybe I guess meta too. You know, so it's not like I hate everything from Facebook, but seriously, <laughs> threads, <laughs> come on guys. The only thing that interested me about it is the, the potential, you know, Fediverse um, expansion. But I, I, I will well, say, in, I was in I ethic, even whatever, you know, it's like a, you, I mean, it's just, well, it's, I mean, <laughs> it's like, oh, we're going to make an Instagram clone, except it's going to be text because Instagram is dying. We're going to make an Instagram clone, and, but it'll be text like Twitter, which is dying. And then we'll, we'll bolt on activity pub because activity pub is, it's like, you know, any anybody any threads architects listening to this i i don't mean to demean your i'm sure you had good intent thing but it organizationally it was doomed to absolute abject failure since we record all of our conversations and feed them directly up into the board i think that once the uh, new new intelligence takes over it'll know exactly whom to hunt down so i think uh, i think <laughs> our methods here are clear. yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to it oh good <laughs> Hunt down and congratulate. Yeah. Hunt uh, <laughs> down and either either right. co either coronate or behead. Who knows? Um. Well, I, I'm I'm proud to say that I was um, one of the people who made for that incredible, you know, hundred million signups in you know six minutes or whatever. Just because, like, I have an Instagram account, it was almost easier to sign up than not to sign up to see what it looked like. And I've never been back. And one one question that, though, well, did, when it said, "Would I? Would you like me to import your Instagram contacts to start you off?" Did you say yes or no? Uh, I did because I actually wasn't even using my personal account. I was using a kind of a I won't call it a burner account, but just an account that I have that only follows. You know, it, it it's following mostly based on just kind of interest, a lot of design stuff. Okay, so, so, so it, might, really... it, might, it might have been relevant because the mistake a lot of people made was taking their normal big Insta follow and making that their, their, their threads follow. And that was a very bad idea. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, all I got on threads, I mean, threads was ended up being a very Twitter-like experience in that it was their algorithm feeding me a bunch of generally popular stuff that didn't have anything to do with my um, interest because there weren't people that related to the interests I was expressing in that. Um, Aram, do you mind muting when you're uh, typing? Oops, sorry, thought I was. That's all right. I'm pretty sure it's you because it sounds like you're typing. <laughs> yeah, none of you the writers type that fast. Yeah, yeah exactly. You recognize his hand. <laughs> Typed like a journalist. That's right. Um, cool. Other fellowshipy topics? Now that we've destroyed threads and uh, hypothesis, and uh, who else can we? Oh, we, hope our, we hope hypothesis continues on. Yeah, but, yeah, but it seems yeah. to be going through a character change. Well, it seems too. I remember it may have been like Mayish. We were talking about like institutional structures to help make turning ideas as ratchets into like a usable thing, so that it didn't. A thing doesn't need a corporate structure to focus money and resources, but you know the commons can kind of come together and allow volunteers or different people to come in and either work on things individually or help provide money to help people work on things um, outside of the traditional capitalist structures. Um, it seems like Peter was doing some experiments 
on that, and I don't know how those are going. I'm uh, I I'm in the middle of a couple organizations doing that. Um, so Lionsburg, that's Lionsburg's charter, um, and then um, Map of the Future is a, a much smaller idea that, or it's a much smaller organization maybe that is kind of along that, that same line. So, I uh, so the I we we kind of have um we kind of have some of that too with things like the Linux Foundation or even there's a NS, NSF grant um proposed uh, NSF grant um um grant uh, grant application um, work group that I'm part of and it's a work group of like five or, or so um, people who uh, want to go for a, NS, organizations that want to go for an NSF grant. That's kind of an open source thing. Um, I, so it's, it's, it's kind of like there, there are funding mechanisms. None of them are great. And I'm not sure that you'll ever end up with a great funding mechanism. Another part of it is kind of the magic, magic intersection of um, a market and um, and users and uh, some really bright, smart, lucky um, product you know product designers, uh, UX people, um, community development folks. So you know, Flickr, Flickr, uh, some of it was you know the resources that they had to work with, but. A lot of it was kind of the magic combination of the right UX people and the right um, uh, pre-alpha um, users, and you know um, some some people who led the vision for long enough to, to kind of have the thing ignite and and take over. So I, I it's it's a good point, Chris. I I wonder how much of it is resources versus um the magic combination of the right people in the right the right place at the right time i have a parallel question to this conversation which is of uh, fediverse and indie web and anything like them which ones are working well and getting traction which ones are not and do they stand a chance of being a hospitable environment for the kind of infrastructure we want i mean isn't the I feel like it's sort of two very different things. I don't think of the indie web as like a specific technical framework. It's a community approach or maybe more accurate to call it a community of practice. Um, and in that sense, like it can encompass anything as long as you get buy-in from the larger community of contributors. Um, I consider that like, I'm certainly not a perfect <laughs> I'm certainly not a perfect um, indie web practitioner, but I do consider that what I work on eventually flows to integrate with people who are involved in indie web's community of practice. But um, whereas ActivityPub and the, the Fediverse, I guess, is like a specific technical framework that requires compliance to participate. Um, whether or not it's the specific technical framework we want maybe um i don't i don't know if that's necessarily a thing we're even in the position to decide on yet but yeah is, I, I think those are two separate things is activity pub and fediverse roughly the same thing i mean at this point most people think of it as basically the same thing obviously you'll get argument from like the at protocol folks consider their pro to consider blue yeah. sky to be its own federated protocol but not but like i think generally the majority of people who use the fediverse are going to consider the fediverse activity pub yeah. that is what they are using to federate 90 percent of the time i am um, yeah not not to disagree i i you're you're more experienced and more in the middle of it than i am but i i had kind of assumed that fediverse was a little bit like um uh, like IndieWeb, um, and and then IndieWeb, I, I community of practice sounds right, but I, it's almost more like a community of vision, right? It's, there's a some rough manifestos of this is the right way to do it.
just I wouldn't even say rough to be clear. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Chris. You're even more familiar with IndieWeb stuff than I am. So, <laughs> well, the I the nice part is you can, and I have kind of come and gone. I'm on a, like a short indie web hiatus right now, mostly because of my summer schedule. Um, but it's the type of thing that if you're in it, you're, you know, no one's going to pressure me and say, Hey, Chris, where did you disappear to? Unless they're, we just want to make sure you're okay as a person and things are fine, but no one's going to pressure or stress me to say, Hey, why aren't you doing X, Y, and Z for the group anymore? And I'll come back and I'll still do things. In fact, I've got a huge list of notes of stuff I want to do when I get time, hopefully later this month or next month to kind of dip my toes back into it. Um, but it's kind of, a, it's if nothing else, it's a group that understands life happens. And if you can't be there actively participating, it doesn't mean you can't come back. You're not forced into it. You're not, you, you don't, it's not the kind of thing where you're going to miss a meeting and they're going to vote you in as the president and suddenly you've got to do all the extra work because you missed the, the meeting where they voted. And similarly, it doesn't also mean that when they make a vote and start a direction that that's where they're always going to go. And then there isn't any respect for new ideas that are coming in the door. Um, so I think first it's kind of a community that works in a specific area, but it's also one too, I think that um, very explicitly works by example. So it is what the people who are there practicing it make it. And if you're not there and you're not actively participating in terms of creating or making or doing something, then it's not that thing. Um, so if you're interested in something and you show up, very few, some people there will like to have the theoretical discussions and it's fun to do that. But typically the only theoretical discussions that are taken seriously are ones by people who have actually written code and have something up and working to say, here's a direction and it's not just all theory, but it has to be practice. Um, and I, in, in a code and web space that generally means they're actually moving the needle and going somewhere because otherwise every other community I've seen that's done something like that. There's a lot of people talking about the problem, like the three guys in McDonald's that you'll see every day, but they will never, ever solve that problem. Whereas in the indie web, even if it's small increments, they're solving some active problem, if for no one else themselves. Um, and I think there's a lot of power in that. And we talked earlier, we mentioned the word ratchet earlier, but that community is a ratchet of things. And they're documenting all the examples of how this problem has been attacked before so that when you come into it, instead of having a theoretical discussion, you can actually look at actual examples. Here's what people have done before. Here's, here's how people have tried to solve this annotation problem as an example. Here's what it looked like here. It worked. It didn't work. Why it didn't work. But then you can use those examples to build the next big, better thing because you've seen the problem space a whole in a whole lot more depth. Um, Brent, thanks for that. And it's, it sounds like it sounds like you're saying that indie web has a healthier um, dynamic that is both more fruitful, more forgiving, and more emergent, or something like that. Yeah, and some of it too is the people who are doing it have had those experiences, like we all have in communities that either come or go. Some work, some don't work but they've seen that before and they really go out of their way. And it's a lot of quiet, silent work that is heavily underappreciated, but they, they really go out of their way to make it kind of a warm, welcoming, let's help the people who want to get things done, do them type of atmosphere. And that's a super hard thing to create. 
Yeah, I think like the indie web is a lot more close in approach to us than any other thing, right? A loose group of people who are aiming towards a specific outcome that are implementing the their own iterations on how to get the outcome, sharing the results and continuing to iterate towards better better results, right? Like that could describe the fellowship of the link and that could describe indie web equally effectively uh, in terms of like what's going on. <laughs> um, in that comparison set, indie web fediverse, are there communities that I'm missing that <clears throat> that should be included there? Is the platform design toolkit Simone Sistro's thing sort of like this? Is there like who who else is trying? I think like there's clearly a very different approach, but that is perhaps worthwhile thinking about coming from like the, and we've discussed it earlier and I don't know, understand exactly what they're doing really well, but from what people have explained and the people who are involved around it, like the Medigov folks and the folks around that, right? They're taking the inverse approach to activity pub, which is activity pub is we're going to create a technical standard and hope the community and web we want arises from that technical standard and the metagov and that type of like let's experiment with ways of doing governance folks are doing the opposite they're saying let's create rules for a community and then hope the technology arises to support it um whether those two play uh, areas are aiming at each other i think is up for argument but they're both sort of thinking about similar things, just with very different approaches. Thank you. Any other? Uh, D-Web. Oh, D-Web, that's right. Thank you. And I don't know if this, I don't know if that's a good link or not. Uh, D-Web Camp is a good link. Mm -hmm. I haven't kept up with D-Web in the last year and a half, but my impression of it before about a year and a half or two years ago was they were kind of an interesting space, but then they went like maybe too far into kind of crypto and Bitcoin-y crazy. I, and I don't know if they've kind of recovered from that and got themselves on a kind of a better track. There's there's a couple of things called D-Web, um, but the, the the main mainline one I think is is not crazy at all. The, or the D-Web web camp. Folks. Yeah. 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 And D-Web I mean, camp is kind of centered camp. around what I mean, it used to be uh, D-Web SF meetup. You know, right. that's kind of the. Yeah. That's the mothership of the camp. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I think a lot of sectors of it are very deep into the crypto, but I do think there are sectors of it that are taking different approaches and there's other stuff in there. Like I don't like the IF, uh, the, the interplanetary file system folks, IPFS, Right, they're not strictly cryptocurrency. They're a whole different operation, and the at protocol people have gone to DWeb as sort of their community as well. And so has, I mean, we we could have an argument over what exactly the underlying technology is supposed to be for something like Noster, but like they clearly think of themselves as a DWeb application too. Yeah, I mean, I was at DWeb and uh, DWeb Camp, and um, the there was certainly you know, crypto adjacency um, going on. Um, but there, I think the prevailing sentiment was, you know, how how do we do this in not necessarily a crypto unfriendly way, but, you know, it, we, we need to generally be thinking in a more um, mainstream direction. And, you know, folks like, um, I mean, Hilo and, you know, uh, Tibet Sprague, um, uh, um, Brad DeGraff, um, and, um, I'm trying to remember some other, um, Doc, Doc Searles and, um, and Joyce, um, you know, other, other people who are in no way crypto folk, um, were like, up, you know, big parts of that. Um, uh, Christina Bowen from Social Roots, um, uh, yeah. Lots of folks that were in no way crypto folks. Mm -hmm. um, 
And there's sort of two um, neighboring things. I don't know that I'm distinguishing them from one another very well, but um, I, I'm trying to sort of, I'm putting indie web Fediverse and technical platformy projects, sort of software platforms in one group. And then there's another collection I have of communities trying to fix world problems, which may or may not have a platform, but are, are more about how do we solve the world's problems and like, you know, how do we go about that? And I've got a, that's got a bunch of, there's probably 60 different uh, groups there. Some of which are the techie ones, like the Holo, Holo chain people, I think are, you know, there's, that, that's another group that's in, that should be in this mix. Right. And the Consilience Project and, um, yep. the, and the adjacent meta crisis. I don't remember what they called there. There was a gathering in Austin last year, though. A, a number of, a lot of D-Web overlap in that group, D-Web camp overlap. Yeah. What's the what was that last group? Uh, I'm trying to remember. There was there was a. I'm trying to remember the name of the event that took place in Austin like about six months ago. Um, that was around the meta crisis, and there was. I mean, it was you know, definitely Daniel Schmachtenberger. Um, and I'm just trying to remember some of it. Oh, oh. I stopped I'll drinking, so whenever someone says his name, I just have to wince. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, with you. Hey, uh, nice photo, Aaron. Um, um, that wasn't South by, right? No, no, it, it was, it was, but it might have been just before or after, for convenience's sake. Um, let me just see if I can. Jerry, I'm getting uh, uh, yeah, distance and errors on the web, or your the brain. Brain links are not working. Yeah. Damn it. Sorry, Michael. Yeah, I'm getting an error too. I like your list of communities trying to fix things. Uh, as a DWeb participant, I think these communities generally lack a an aggregate output that everyone can contribute to and some kind of checklist of things that need to be done that people can knock off it's nice to have places to talk with like-minded folks but if the like-minded folks are all encouraged to you know create a startup idea whether it's commercial or not and try to get it off the ground on its own merits to be the solution to the problem that they see that's just tying a lot of things together on the same raft and seeing if it floats and not building weather stations and lighthouses. And that's, do you have always feels like that's, that's missing and we, sh we shouldn't do that. If you're, I, I think this is the biggest uh, factor that leads to large companies ending up controlling what ends up being the, um, the, the historical record of things that get used because if you're if you're an organization, you're like, oh, we need lighthouses and like a bunch of boring things. Okay, here here are some people who can spend a few years doing that. Um, it doesn't have to be a fun thing to talk about at the party. Everyone understands that it's, that's needed. And it's weird to see all the people who care about, say, federating social media who like the app protocol being like, well, I kind of differed on these three issues. So we're going to build our own protocol, and it's going to be another twelve months. But uh, I'm sure they'll end up working together sometime in the future because we all believe in decentralization, right? No, uh, definitely not. That is not how this works. And if you cared about adversarial, if you cared about like the long term non like non um, directed, just ambient conflict between central organizations doing things and network doing things, one of the things you need to do is try to avoid duplicating obvious arenas of effort. So that, that is, um, I, I don't know if we've been in the same. Um, conversation before, but that that was the dominant theme, I would say, at the web camp and in the collaborative technology alliance where I'm working. I mean, it's so like a, a bunch of people talking that way, but you know, a, a separate effort that I think is is churning now is like, what is the economic diffuser that allows that? to really happen because we all think that should happen. Everybody's got 
a little bit of something built and a little bit of equity and they're and they're and they're like links parked somewhere in Jerry's brain and you know you know I mean, the, the, everybody's got some amount to lose by adopting someone else's common standard and you know nobody's in a great position to be the one so how do we develop the the kind of mutual assurance to say hey let's let's you know synthesize our efforts doesn't mean you go to zero and i go to a hundred it means you know we we all we all get a living wage nobody's going to hit the jackpot here um and that is the problem it's an economic it's an econ i mean the, the fact that we live in a you know in a capitalist society um is is the problem that makes the big players the only winners and all the people who believe otherwise and agree in their beliefs unable to forge common ground um so be interested in talking about that more if you're, <laughs> if you're interested in that. well that's I, i've been looking at some of the sociology and government structures and you know we've the u.s government and the american people have generally been hijacked by marketing to think that capitalism is the solution to everything when it's patently not so you can go back and even look at things you know public utilities water the electrification of the united states yes companies were electrifying the us but they were only doing it in massive cities and didn't care about anybody outside of the hubs so it required government oversight and help to do that to make it kind of a, a public good um and well, I, also cooperative sorry yeah. um the, the utilities it's funny because i was yesterday i was like writing up something about utility cooperatives because it's such a great example of like a group of people with a shared need that none of them can afford but together you know they they can have this common good and if if nobody's running it for a profit and everybody you know whatever excess gets fed back to the cooperators you know there are models for that for for social networks the the great thing about electricity or water or any of these things is that they're they're a common protocol <laughs> well i use i use h2o but you use incompatible uh whatever that is so we can't be on the same water system i use h2o classic i don't know about you um i still use html so you know there you go uh so i read cadillac desert some years ago which is all about water in the west and realized that like the middle of the country is got more social programs and more social welfare than they ever realized and this is the, the part of the country that hates socialism and everything else and it's like they're getting water for 20 dollars a square uh, uh uh what's it called a foot mile something like that Acre um, feet something like that, that that costs $200 to get to them and have been for years, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Like, you know, any number of things, but, but the U S under invests in infrastructure. We have this phobia, anger, allergy, whatever it is to infrastructure, partly inculcated the way, uh, Michael, you were just saying about how we've been taught that everything should be, a, you know, have a capitalist answer. And then, and then we do all these funny giveaways, like the early, um, Hoover wanted radio, so he gave them spectrum, but then TV got a whole big, big slew of spectrum just gifted to them, uh, which was then protected forever. And they would, you know, they, they didn't want it. They didn't want to take it away from their cold, dead hands. Um, all these stupid things, all sorts of subsidies and, and protections, never mind the railroad right of way, uh, et cetera. So, so our question, we were on a fruitful path a moment ago before we all got angry by the shared memories. Um, we were on a fruitful path of, so how do we do these generative commonses that can intersect so that m everybody gives up a little bit, nobody loses big, and we wind up with uh, infrastructures that work? I, the, a, a thing that felt like it used to work and, you know, I don't know, memories memory makes everything better or something like that the the back in the day the ietf and internet standards really worked well 
Um, and there was there were a couple of, like spoiler things. One of them was that a lot of the work got done by grad students or professors at universities, and they didn't have to worry about their jobs. But there was also a good camaraderie and um, the ability to come up with like several technical things, technical ideas to, to kind of solve the same thing. It, it seemed to work out pretty well that people would go, uh, you know, um, 